Welcome to the Riverbend Golf Course Care Program. Please sit back, turn up the volume, and enjoy today's program. The purpose of this presentation is to further develop a strong golf culture at Riverbend for our members and our guests. Divot replacement, bunker etiquette, ball mark repair, pace of play, We'll go into some local rules. We want to develop an understanding of Riverbend's course, features, and stock. The bottom line is we want everybody to have an enjoyable round of golf, if you're a member or a guest. As you play a round of golf at Riverbend, you're going to notice that we have four types of grasses on the golf course. The tees, the fairways, and the greens are a bent grass. The intermediate rough, which is the darker green, grass that you see in the picture is a mixture of blue and rye grass and this outlines the fairways. The rough is a mixture of tall fescue grasses and throughout the golf course we have native areas which is fine fescue. As you approach the first tee you'll notice that it's a clean look, clutter free. The only thing you'll see are tee markers on the tee. We have no trash cans, no boxes for broken tees, no box of seed mix. Our signage, our ball washers, our trash cans, our benches have all been moved out of the way. If you take a divot on the tee, always replace it. If you can't find your divot, do not use the seed mix on the tee. And always pick up your broken tees. If you do take a divot, as I mentioned earlier, always replace your divot on the tees, the fairways, the rough, all throughout the golf course. You want to put your divot back into the hole that you made, step on it lightly so it's smooth, and move on. If you cannot find your divot, or your divot explodes, then you would use the seed mix. What we've learned on the golf course is that in the months of July and August, the weather is too hot for the divots really to reattach and grow. So at that time, we ask that you use seed mix only in the fairway and rough. When applying the seed mix, just put a little bit into your divot mark and flatten it out so it's even with the turf. Never put a big mound in there. This will affect the mowers and also any seed that starts to germinate will be cut off and will not reattach to the ground. Remember, the seed mix is good in the fairway and rough only, not the tees. Our beautiful bunkers. They were designed to be very visible, have a lot of flashing, the ball hits and rolls down to the bottom. These bunkers are maintained weekly to make sure that the sand is consistent throughout each bunker. In a few minutes, you're going to learn about entering and exit bunkers, where to put the rakes, how to rake a bunker, walk in and out, cleaning your shoes before you go in it. So please sit back and enjoy this video. At this time, I'd like to ask John Madden, our club professional, to come in and take a couple shots and talk to you about bunker etiquette. Once again, as I walk into the bunker, it's going to be on the low side up to my ball to hit my shot. Once I hit my shot, I get my rake. I'm going to smooth out the area so it's better than when I got in here. Putting the rake back in the bunker, this direction, tapping the sand off my feet. And now I'm going to walk to the outside of the bunker, not to uh, form a goat trail right along the edge. With our new bunkers, we're always allowed to enter down the finger. We want to make sure we walk in at sand level, so this is the lowest spot. 
grab my rake to hit my shot. Once again, break all my footprints, smooth everything out so it's better than when I cut it. Just a reminder, every ball that hits the green leaves a mark, even if it's a short chip or pitch. Please fix your ball mark and one other. It only takes 15 seconds to fix a ball mark. An unfixed ball mark takes over 30 days to heal. Remember, insert your tool at a 45 degree angle, push toward the center, go all the way around doing this, tap down with your putter or your shoe. Never bring any soil, sand, or any of the roots up to the surface. Enjoy this short video. Okay, uh, now we're going to demonstrate the proper way to fix a ball mark. These will be the new ball mark repair tools that are handed out. As you can see, there's only one prong as opposed to the two in the past. Uh, the thinking of repairing ball marks now has changed from the past. We ask that when you go to fix your ball mark, you see the ball mark here, that you don't do it the old way by lifting up from the edges. The new way and new standard is put your tool in and move the turf towards the center of the imprint, or the indentation. All around the edges, moving towards the center, and then stepping it down. Again, we have another one on the edges to the center. Just like that, stepping it down, smoothing it off, you're good to go. Cart path etiquette. Did you know that on hole number one, the cart path on the left ends about 100 yards away from the hole? Unique to Riverbend. If it was cart path only, we'd ask at that point that you cross the fairway and pick up the path on the right side. Golf cart etiquette. Over the last five years, we've learned a lot about how people use their carts on the golf course. Did you know that 60% of our rounds are cart rounds? And we've noticed that wear patterns around the tees and the greens. We ask when it's cart path only, around the tees and the greens that you have all four wheels on the cart path. This will eliminate a wear pattern around the edges of the cart path. Because of the improvement in drainage, most of the time you come out to play, our cart rules are going to be scatter. What does that mean? That means when I'm playing in a hole, once I get 10 yards in front of the forward tee, which is the red one at Riverbend, I can enter the rough or the fairway as many times as I want. The maintenance crew wants you to scatter with your cart. I can do this until I get up to the brown post with the white top. At that point, I need to return to the path, stay on the path to the next tee. Remember, it's always cart path only on the all par threes. Occasionally, due to wear patterns of cart use, the maintenance crew will put up posted signs and stakes and ask you to stay out of certain areas where we might find a lot of wear. These areas that we've noticed immediately are in holes 1 once you go over the bridge, holes 9 and 14 crossing the bridge at that point and also on 18 going over the Madden Bridge. Occasionally we get too much rain and it is cart path only. This means for all 18 holes you must remain on the path. Just a reminder when on the path, 
and you're going to hit your ball, take three clubs and the divot mix. Why three clubs? Take the club that you think you're going to hit, one more and one less. This will help with pace of play. Remember, it's always cart path only around the tees and greens. We do offer handicap flags for those members and guests that have a handicap. These flagged carts are allowed to go inside the brown posts with white tops. They can go within 15 feet of a green side bunker or 30 feet of the green. We do ask once you approach the green and get toward a green side bunker that you go back toward the path so it'll be easier to go to the next tee. Also on the par threes, you're able to go in the rough and off the cart path. But once again, this is for handicap flag carts only. Did you know that 40% of all the rounds at Riverbend are walking rounds? We're seeing more and more use of the pool carts. Just a reminder that when it's cart path only, the pool carts can go into the rough and the fairway. We do ask around tees and greens and the clubhouse if possible to stay on the path. When you have a pool cart, never go between the green and the green side bunker on the fringe or rough. We see quite a few people doing this on holes 3, 9, 15, and 18. Always go to the outside of the green side bunker. On number 2, you can always pull your pull cart closest to the 3 T, then take it up the hill and cut in front of the 3rd T. The next couple of slides will go into the local rules at Riverbend. Each course has its local rules. The starter or the host pro should always give you a local rule sheet or tell you the rules of the day before you tee off. Throughout the golf course, you'll find native grass areas. If your ball comes to rest in there, you must play it as it lies. This area is for foot traffic only, no golf carts or pull carts. If you were to drive through the tall grass, it will damage the blades and cause ruts. Once again, you have to play the ball as it lies. Good luck. Throughout the golf course, you're going to find a lot of landscape beds and stake trees. We do not want you going into any of the landscape beds. If your ball comes to rest in there, we ask that you take your closest point of relief, one club length, drop it in the rough, and play on no penalty. Once again, no foot traffic or carts in that area. We've been replacing a lot of our older trees with new younger trees. We've gone from the white pines to the hardwoods. As we plant these trees each year, a lot of them will be staked so the root ball takes some time to establish itself. You get relief from a staked tree, swing, stance, nearest point of relief, no close to the hole, no penalty. Wood chips and pine straw. Anytime your ball comes to rest on the wood chips or pine straw, you must play the ball as it lies. You do get relief from the grooved area that separates the wood chips and the pine straw from the rough. In the lower picture, you can see the groove pretty clearly. If your ball comes to rest in the groove, you're allowed to move it out of the groove but must drop it either on the pine straw or the wood chips and play with no penalty. This is for safety reasons. We don't want anybody to injure themselves trying to hit out of the groove. Riverbend has many water hazards, and we're going to go over some of the local rules that describes our water hazards. You can play out of any of the water hazards except the creek on number 3 and the pond and creek complex on number 18. Number 3 short par 3. You hit it left into the water. At no time do we want you going into the creek to retrieve your ball. It is too hazardous. There's a lot of rocks down there. You have to climb down the wall. It is marked as a ladder water hazard. 
So option one is you can play under the rules of golf and take relief for the ladder water hazard. You can also go back to the tee and hit. Or the third option is a drop area that's usually found at the edge of the fairway or the rough. Once again, at no time do we want anybody to go into the creek to retrieve your ball. The maintenance crew has left two large ball retrievers along the wall so you can retrieve your ball out of the creek. Please use safety around the wall. Hole number nine. Our longest par five on the golf course. Downhill, have to hit across the pond and then back up. If your ball does come to rest in the water, one of the options is the drop zone which is on the T side on the old dam. Your other option is since it's marked as a water hazard and yellow line, you can keep that point that across the margin between you and the hole and go as far back as you like, dropping your ball. In both cases, there's a one stroke penalty when you hit your ball into the water. creek and pond feature on number 18. At no time do we want you to go try to retrieve your ball out of the creek or the pond feature on 18. These ponds are lined and we don't want the ball retrievers to damage the liners. Also, the ponds are designed to be have a sharp drop off and if someone were to fall in, we would need at least two people to help pull you out. It's very dangerous. Just a reminder, if you're eating up on the honors terrace and you have children with you, please keep an eye on them because we've seen more and more kids playing around with the pond. It's just for safety. We don't want them to fall into the pond or get hit by a golf ball. The above picture shows damage applied when putting sunscreen on or insect repellent on grass. Never, never put it on tees, fairway rough greens. Always apply sunscreen and insect repellent on a hard surface such as the car path or in the lock room. Thank you. The golf practice facility is open seven days a week weather permitting. We do ask that you always sign in in the golf shop first. This allows us to know how many people use the practice facility annually plus if there's an emergency we can get a hold of you. Always use a tight pattern when hitting, park your carts in the designated area, and really only hit where we've set up balls for the day. The golf practice facility opens up a half an hour before the first tee time and closes at dark four days out of the week. This is new for this year. On Sundays we close two hours before dark because it's a clean pick night. We must pick up all the balls because they cut all the areas on Monday. And just a reminder, all juniors must yield to members waiting to hit balls. When hitting on the tees at the GPF, always use a tight divot pattern. Lower picture. Never scatter your divots. The maintenance crew has found it's much easier to have it repaired and grow back faster when you use a tight pattern. The short game area, uneven lie area, and the fairway bunkers. Every day balls are put out in those areas. We ask that you use common sense when using these areas, especially the short game area. A lot of times I'll see someone chipping and then someone else is hitting a full shot into the green. As a reminder, we ask that you pick up your balls, you fix your ball marks, replace your divots, or use the seed mix, and finally rake the bunkers. We'd like the area to be the same for everybody to practice. Thanks, and hit the short game. The scores will go down. Pace of play. This has been an area we've been working on the last couple of years. And really, what we've noticed is people aren't ready to hit their shot. It starts even before I tee off. If my tee time is 9 a.m., that means I am on the tee at 9 a.m. with my ball teed up, swinging a club. It 
doesn't mean I'm up in the staging area looking for a bottle of water or a towel or talking to my buddies. I am hitting the shot. Time part River Bend is four hours. That means when I get done playing, if I teed off at nine o'clock, I am putted out on the 18th hole at one o'clock, four hours later. Always play the tees that will make it enjoyable to play. If you can't hit a par four and two, move up a set. We want you to have fun out there. Uh, it'll play faster that way and it'll be more enjoyable. We encourage ready golf. What does that mean? When it's my turn, I am swinging the club and hitting the shot. I am not waiting, looking for yardage, looking for seed mix. I'm ready to go. I'm going to give you three examples that just help out and it will save 20 to 30 seconds every hole. Number one, if I'm riding with somebody in a cart, I'm going to drop them off at their ball and then I'm going to go to my ball. They hit, I hit, I come back, pick them up and we keep going. I don't sit in the cart, watch them hit, then they get in, we drive to my ball. When parking around a green, always park the cart closer to the next tee. Example number two, always park it all the way around the back closer to the third tee. When I come off the green, I will walk directly to that cart and go to the third tee. I don't have to walk back across the green and people behind us have to wait. Always record your score, and if you had any clubs like your putter or wedge from the previous hole, put those back in the bag at the next tee. That will save you 20 to 30 seconds each round, just right there, per hole. We will be out marshalling this year. Once again, the flags are green is good, you're in great position, good time par going on. Yellow means you're out of position. We will talk to a group that's out of position. We'll also pour caddy for them for a little bit, help them find their balls, get them back into position. If you end up with a red flag, that means we've already given you a yellow flag. We've talked about you uh, back and forth, trying to get you to speed up. You're over a hole behind. We're going to make you skip a hole to pick up your pace of play. And finally, don't forget, we ask that everybody hits a provisional ball if you ever think you've lost your ball. And you only have five minutes to look for a lost ball, not seven or ten five minutes, then it's lost. Let's get around in four hours or less. The next couple of slides are going to go over posting scores and handicaps. And uh, this year the USGA has come out with something new that any person that plays by themselves as a single cannot post their score. If you have a marker or somebody driving the cart or a caddy with you and they can attest your score, then you can post it. But just playing by yourself, you can. Just a reminder, you can post nine whole scores. So if I played the back nine in an evening, then the next week I come out and play the back nine again, uh, the computer will merge those together as an 18-hole score. Also, always, always post your score every round. We ask that you try to post within three days of playing. Home, away, if you're in a tournament. The definition of tournaments have changed this year schedule in the Riverbend schedule book has all the tournaments where you have to put a T uh, next to your posting. We also continue to use the equitable stroke control when posting. If I'm a nine handicap or less, the most I can post is a double bogey. If I'm playing a round of golf, I might have gotten a 10 on a hole, but for posting purposes, the most I would put down is a double bogey. Many ways to post your score. You can do it in the Pro Shop. You can do it online at the Riverbend website, through the VSGA website. You can do it through the USGA. Jen has a mobile app. Did you know that away scores may be posted at the club where you played your round? Just go into their computer and you can post your score and it'll come back to Riverbend. At any time, if you ever have any questions, you're not sure about the rules of posting, Stop into the golf shop, give us a call. Also, the handicap committee this year will be out. Uh, you'll see a lot of articles in the Riverbender. You'll see different flyers up throughout the year, just educating you on the rights, the do's and don'ts of posting your score. Don't forget, let's post those scores right away. That will always help out 
uh, the handicaps are updated on the first of the month and the 15th each month. Cell phones. We use them more and more every day. We use them more than just to talk. But please, use common courtesy. Common sense went out on the golf course to the practice facility. Put your cell phone on vibrate. If you must take a call or make a call, please move away from the people around you. Don't walk toward a green or a tee. At the practice facility, walk to the GPF building or to a cart. People are out. They don't want to be disturbed or distracted by someone yapping on the phone. Well, you made it. We appreciate you joining us for this course care program. Please click on the link above. There's a short Q&A to review, and you'll receive your credit for taking this program. We look forward to seeing you on the course. Have a great day.